We have some great magic. Also, some of my reptile friends from Jelly Bean Entertainment. Plus, along with those reptile friends, one of my favorite Montreal Canadiens fans returns. But before we get to all that, I would like to remind you, if you miss a show, you can catch up with us on Facebook and YouTube as NL Now. Now, magician Michael Conway. Hello, Michael. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good. Thanks for coming on your show. We're glad you could come in and see us. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, so I understand you do magic tricks and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So how, when and how did you decide to do magic? Was it something you wanted to pursue from an early age? Yeah, I was about 12 years old and I got a magic book from the dollar store. And that's what kind of got me hooked. You know, I figured out a couple of tricks, tried mm -hmm. them on people, and it went well. And it kind of snowballed from there, got bigger and hopefully better. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I got started. So, um, are there any magicians in particular you tried to look up and imitate, sort of? Yeah. Uh, well, I've first seen David Blaine on TV doing card mm -hmm. tricks, that kind of thing. And Chris Angel was on TV, and David Copperfield. And yeah. YouTube was good because it helps you see magicians from all around the world that you wouldn't normally see so that's a lot of what I do is I check out people all around the world and see what they're doing and compare it to what I'm doing and try and keep up yeah. That, yeah so if you went to a magic show for one of those magicians is it easy for you to spot some of the tricks that others are performing well the longer you do magic the harder it is to be tricked and to be fooled yeah. so you look at it in a different way kind of uh, about the performance. There's only so many tricks you can do, but after a while you look at the performer themselves more than the trick and the way they present it, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so. I do get fooled for sure every now and yeah. then. Yeah. So um, if the folks out there wanted to contact you for a performance or get more information on an upcoming performance, how could they do that? Yeah, best way is probably my um, web page, which is www.mcmagic.ca or Facebook page, Michael Conway Magic. So you can message me there and see everything you want to see and know everything you want to know. Perfect. So do you have any plans for the new year coming up in January, February? Yeah, i got a few shows lined up. A um, big Christmas one now is my next big show at the Arts and Culture Center. That's the 16th, 17th, and 18th. So that's something we do every Christmas. You know, something to look forward to. It's a fun show for the whole family. So that's the next big one. Okay, yep. so selfie time. Oh, perfect. Selfie time. You can get stick and... Oh. If I can remember how to do the selfie stick. Yeah. <laughs> it's very confusing. Got it? Yeah, I Perfect. think we did. Okay, Michael, before we get to your magic tricks, we're going to play Get to Know Me. I'll ask you five questions, and you'll come back with the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. Okay, favorite food? Uh, probably pizza. Favorite movie? Forrest Gump. <laughs> favorite TV show? Hmm. I like Breaking Bad. That's a good mm -hmm. show. A song you sing out to aloud in the car. Mm, not too much singing. People don't really enjoy it. <laughs> I like Sam Roberts, though. If I had to pick someone to listen to, Sam Roberts, for sure. And who inspires you the most to do magic? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. I guess trying to uh, inspire, probably from the people I perform for, watching their faces and smiles. That's what inspires me to keep wanting to do it, right? So. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, now I think you have a few tricks for us today. Sure, I wouldn't be much of a magician if I didn't, <laughs> hey. Um, I'll start off with a classic of magic, okay? Okay. This is one of the oldest tricks in the book. All it uses is a piece of rope. Okay, now you're, you're a smart person, right? Very smart. Very figured. You know every piece of rope has two ends, right? Yes, I do. Okay, and one middle. If I take a pair of scissors and I cut the rope in half, 
That gives me how many pieces of rope? That will give you two. Two pieces of rope. Two. Now watch close, this is amazing. I'm gonna put these two pieces of rope back together. Okay, I tie a knot. Okay. Okay, it's a magic knot. Mm -hmm. and just like magic, that rope is back in one piece. Ah. Oh. Not very impressed, sorry. Not very impressed. Remember what I said though, it's a magic knot. When you take a deep breath and blow, go ahead. It melts right off, watch. Ah. That's a little better. It was a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to learn a magic trick? Well, sure. Okay, I'll show you how something works. Okay, and then I'll I'll show you the trick first, and I'll show you how it works. How's that okay. sound? Okay. Okay. Great. So it's a very simple trick. Everything you need for this, you can get at the dollar store. Oh. A red handkerchief. Okay. You stuff it in your fist. Snap your fingers. Give it a shake, just like magic. It changes into an egg. Okay. The handkerchief reappears uh -huh. in my pocket. Okay, now here's how it works. Okay, this is not a real egg. This is a plastic egg. Like I said, you can get it at the dollar store. There's a hole in the back, just like that. You need two red handkerchiefs or purple. Just make sure the handkerchiefs are the same color. Okay, there's not much of a magic trick. Yeah. Okay, now these are already in your case before you start the trick. Okay, you show your hands empty, you reach in, you pull out the red handkerchief, and you try and hide that plastic egg in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, you gotta keep your hands moving. Just like before, you shove the handkerchief inside. Okay. You can ask for a magic word, it doesn't really matter. You snap your fingers, give it a shake, just like magic, it changes. The red handkerchief reappears in your pocket. Okay. Now, if you're going to try this trick yourself, you've got to be very careful. Because mm -hmm. if anyone's standing behind you, they're going to see the hole in the egg. Uh, they're not going to be very impressed, will they? No. If that happens, do what I do. Watch. Give it a snap, another shake, just like magic. Now it changes Whoops. into a real egg. Ah. Ah, that's a little better. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick before I go, would you like to see one more? Sure. Okay, I'll tell you a little secret there, Gary. Sometimes the most amazing magic happens with everyday items. Mm. Things that you can find around the house. Right, you've seen that before? Oh, I just saw it. I hope so. <laughs> now here's what happens, Gary. I'm going to count to three. Just like magic, this toilet paper is going to vanish. Ready? One, two, three. Whew. Ball in the back. <laughs> Vanishes. Wow. Any idea how it works? Um, well, oh my. Yeah, when you weren't looking, all I did is I threw yeah, it behind your head. I know, I know. Now, for a magic show, Gary, that's not a very good trick, is it? Not at all. No, thanks. Yes. Would you like to see something way better? Please. Okay, here we go. You want to try some? I'm on a no toilet paper diet today. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. Can somebody call maintenance? Please. <laughs> maintenance. <laughs> Gary, this is for you. Treasure it forever. Hey, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Okay, so Michael has one more trick for us, I guess. So earlier, before the show, I signed a $20 bill. I don't know what it was for. Yes, there's my $20 bill I signed. Yeah, that's your signature Gary there. Gary Weaselton. Oh, yep, yes, everybody can see. Okay, remember what that looks like. You won't forget, of course. Well, <laughs> it's my signature. <laughs> exactly. Fold it up a couple of times, once, twice, three, four, five, really, really small. Okay, now you got a, a mug there on your desk, okay? Yes, so I watch do. close. I'm going to fold this up really, really small. $20 bill is going to disappear, reappear underneath your mug. You ready? Okay. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. <whistles> Did you see the mug move? No. Uh, it did. Watch. It did? Bill is underneath. Oh. Um, Didn't work. That's okay, Gary. We'll try it again. Do you have another $20 bill? <laughs> I'm kidding. I never really had the first one. No, so exactly. Though, really Watch close. Involved. When you're a magician, Gary, you always have plan B, okay, in case the trick doesn't work the first time. And tonight, this is plan B, okay? I have a purple bag. Inside the bag, Gary, there's a knife. Oh. It's a butter knife. You can oh, relax, okay? okay? But Gary, if you can guess what the second thing is, you win a prize. Any idea what it could be? 
A $20 bill with no. the name Gary. I can't bring back your money, Gary. I'll give you something even better. Watch close. Even better. All the way from Florida, a shiny, fresh orange. Oh. Okay. How about that? Would you rather have the 20 bucks or the orange? $20, please. $20, I figured. So watch close. I have garbage here so I don't make too much of a mess. Keep your one eye on the knife, one eye on the orange, okay? Perfect. We're going to cut inside, just like this, all the way around. And if you look very close, there's something growing inside this orange. It's not seeds. It looks like a $20 bill. Okay, I'm going to open this up. And Gary, if this has your name on it, I think that would be pretty cool. I think it would. That's it. That's mine. That's yours. Pretty cool. There you go. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> <clears throat>Carolyn from the Coast 101 Morning Show and Troy Stuckless of Jelly Bean Entertainment plus all his reptile friends. Okay. Yay. I'm excited about this. Hi, Troy. Hey. Hi. I'm excited too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you have for us? All right, so today, okay. a couple of the things that I have. Mm -hmm. I have some, I have a lizard, two snakes, uh, a turtle, and later on, I'll show you a sugar glider. So, is uh, anybody? Well, first of all, do you have anything with claws that I could rest on this that can do little? Shrimp? I'm gonna give you a snake because we don't want to hurt that jersey. Oh, you! I love fan. that jersey. Okay. The rivalry going on here. So, I guess the first thing I'm gonna get is for you. Oh, okay. Something with no claws. In fact, no feet. So oh. it doesn't hurt that at all. This little guy, his name is Bentley. And Bentley, Bentley is a ball python. Oh. Now, a lot of people think of the name python and think they're kind of a, it's a dangerous name, but these guys here are, are really friendly. These guys are one of the best pet snakes that you can possibly have. Monty very, python. It's very common. Really Monty it. python, yeah. yeah, it comes from that. This guy here is a constrictor, so a lot of the times I get kids ask me, are they poisonous? No, they're not poisonous. Do they have teeth? Yes, they have teeth like most any other animal, but they're constrictors, so what they like to do is they like to wrap around things instead of biting on things. So you can actually thing. go out on the town and use it as an accessory. You can, and in fact, if you want, I'm just gonna lean in over here and we can make this little guy into a little tie for you. Ah. To make it a little better and we'll stretch him down like that. How does that feel? your tie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that, he tied himself in a knot. There we go. Now these guys... I feel incredibly <laughs> awkward. <laughs> it's okay, he's just gonna slither around there a little bit. I'll take him around. Oh, there you are. Now, all he's gonna do is Try to get a little, your head. Try to get around. He slithers a little bit. They're not that active. Um, this time of day, he's probably just starting to wake up. They're, they're nocturnal type animals. I think it's going right towards Gary. Oh, um. And what you'll <laughs> notice something really cool about these guys is their pattern. Their pattern is yeah. really cool. They come from Africa and they come from the jungles of Africa. So basically, they live on the, on the canopy floor. So they blend and in. And they blend in really well. So it'll be really hard to see them. Yeah. Now, this little guy, That's great. he gets to grow probably another two feet, a little bit thicker as well. They're not overly big right. snakes, but they're, they are very, very, very nice snakes, yeah. Do you hear that <gasps> scratching? So yeah, I heard that so scratching yeah, too. A lot of people think they're slimy. That's, yeah. I get that question a lot. Are they slimy and they don't want to touch them because they're gross? Yeah, they're really, really dry. Really dry screen. Now, seeing that they're dry, doesn't mean that they live in a dry area. They like to have a little bit of humidity as well. Right. It helps with their skin. Yeah. That's so cool. So, Bill, if you want to, you can hold on to this guy. Oh, okay. And you can hold him on. Just let him slither through your hands. Don't mind if his head comes around and, and he licks you. He's just trying to smell you and get the lay of the land there. He loves that jersey as well. He's a big Canadians fan. If you're wearing a Leafs jersey, I probably wouldn't have passed him to you. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. I'm in, the, I'm in snake handcuffs. The next little guy, her name, or the girl I should say, her name is Kira. Oh, Kira. Kira, can, Kira can hold that one. Kira is a savanna monitor. And a monitor lizard is one of the biggest 
lizards in the world. So if you think of the biggest lizard in the world, who can tell me what it is? Uh, Komodo dragon. Komodo yeah. dragon, ding, you got it right. So Komodo dragon is actually a monitor lizard, a type of monitor. Is it? And if you look at this guy real closely, you can see some of the same features in them. Yeah. Now the only thing this guy don't have is the bacteria in the mouth, like the Komodo dragon and everything right. like that. But you can tell by the tongue, the and claws, the, the, yeah. the big beefy back legs and right. front legs. They're very, very, very powerful creatures. And they're also carnivores. So, so what would this eat? This one wild? here in the wild, it would eat bugs, it would eat mice, other smaller lizards. Uh, could be frogs, could be anything really that moves that it can catch. Yeah. Hi. Like like Gary? It wouldn't. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm fleece. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it eats fleece. Yeah. It's a little dry. Yeah, a little, just a little. <laughs> yeah. And they have really really powerful legs because what they like to do is they like to dig as well. They can dig elaborate tunnels. They can dig little burrows as well. And if they're chasing after an animal that goes down a hole, they're coming down after it oh. as well. And that really long tongue helps them sniff out animals as well. And if you You're tell awesome. how strong or she is, she can oh. hold on like that. She's Look at that. really, really strong. Yeah. And that's Kira. And this is Kira. Now, if you want to hold her, yeah. you can certainly hold her. <laughs> yeah. She is a little squirmy today, but okay. she will latch onto your arm right there, yeah, just already. like that. And, and she might and scratch you a little. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'm good with it. Claws are trimmed down. I do give her a pedicure there every now and then. Now oh. you got me. But, uh, there you go. There you go. And if she gets oh. too squirmy, you can just let her come down to your lap okay. a little bit or have her on the table. Hi. Hi. Here, look there you go. She found a good spot. She likes yeah. it. Awesome. And you'll see that she uses her tail as well. So as a balance? Very few lizards, they'll use her tail and they'll wrap around. I'm them. Gary. As balance as well, yeah. Welcome to my cool. show. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Gary's show. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now, the next one, this is one of my favorite types of reptiles because uh, they live for a very, very, very long time. And this one in particular can live upwards of 130 years. And this is Kizzy, and she is a sulcata tortoise. Hi, Kizzy. And Hi. Kizzy. As you can tell, people think that tortoises are really slow. Kizzy's, uh, you know, she's, she's a, little, a little quicker, yeah. a little quicker, yeah. Now, I, can't, I can't believe how, really, when you really look at them this close, how Hi. you see a lot of dinosaur in them, you know? That's right, yeah, and, they've, and turtles, of course, were around since the Jurassic period as well. They haven't changed much since the Jurassic period. Um, more so getting smaller, feeding on different vegetation, of course, a uh, little bit of little bit of changes, but uh, this little girl is a tortoise. So a tortoise is like a turtle, but it's a, it's a land turtle. So she actually can't go in water. Now she will go in water up to just her belly, just the waddle in the water a little bit, okay. but she can't swim. She would swim just like a rock. <laughs> yeah, so she stays out of the water. In fact, she comes from the savanna. So if she's in Africa, she would stay to the little little grassy areas, shrubs, little trees, and she would go around looking for food basically all day. That's all she likes to do is eat, eat, and eat more. And what does she eat? She eats, she's a herbivore, okay. so all kinds of vegetables, whatever she can, whatever vegetation she can get. Mainly over there would be leaves and, and grass and uh, any oh. types of shrubs. She loves berries. They, anytime they can find berries, it's like candy for them. Oh, okay. They love their berries. And she really likes flowers as well. So the first thing you'll see if there's a flower somewhere and she can spot it a meter away, really? that's the first thing she'll be lying for. She loves cool. pea flowers. They're like, they're like candy, very, very sweet for them. And how old is she? She is eight years old right now. So she is eight and she's about, what, about the size of a small dinner plate right now. Right. When she gets to be about 75, 80 years old, she'll be reaching you know, upwards of her largest size, which will be She'll be a little bit wider than this, and maybe about that long. Wow. Right here, so she's gonna be very high. She's gonna be big, big tortoise. She now, with something like this in the wild, what would hunt it? What, what, what would uh, they, they don't have many natural predators as a as an older tortoise. Yeah. As a younger tortoise, uh, anything can get them. Like you, you could see, you know, just like any other animal, like the lions and stuff okay. like that in Africa. They they can hurt the shell, but as they get bigger like this, all they have to do is go in their shell, and that's a that's a pretty hard shell right there. So it's well protected. They're well protected, yeah, it's so they don't have any too many. Right yeah. And they don't attack anything besides plants as well, Ooh, so they're, they're pretty good. They the plants. shell is actually a really interesting fact about the shell. The shell is made of something that we have on our bodies, uh, just a whole lot thicker 
<laughs> and that will be the same thing your fingernails and toenails are made of. Oh, really? Kerosene, yeah. So oh. if you feel your fingernail and then you okay, feel gotcha, her shell, gotcha, gotcha. it's very, very, very similar. Except a whole lot thicker. And that's what allows it to grow as they get older. So the the shell actually, they don't actually come out of their shell. And that's a lot of the question. First question mm -hmm. I get, can they come out of their shell? Right. No, they can't come out of their shell. You mean cartoons have lied all these years? <laughs> Franklin is the only turtle I've ever seen come out of a shell. Yeah, so. These guys have to grow with their shell, and as they grow, you can tell, like a tree, they have oh, all okay. these rings. In fact, if, if I don't know if the camera can see it there, but if you look real closely, okay. all these little tips right here, mm -hmm. that they were all together when she was born. Okay. And that was her shell. Go. And there as she grew, they expanded out from each other. I got you. There we go. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> that's the three of those. Now I'm gonna show you something really, really, really cool. Okay. I'm going to take these guys away from you now because okay. the big one's coming out and he's getting a little squirmy. <laughs> all right, yeah. got her? There we go, okay. I got her. Cool. Yeah, put this guy over here. <clears throat> Look, lizard scratches. Lizard scratches. <laughs> it's like cat scratches, except cooler. <laughs> it's like a badge of honor. So, I think he's interested in Gary's nose. I'm actually really surprised that you go. You would. You would actually pick her up. Not a lot of people would pick up something like her. Oh, really? She's a, yeah, where she's a little bit bigger. It's now a little I like intimidating. Lizards. A little intimidating. She's but, slow. Geckos are much faster. <laughs> well, I I wouldn't say that. She is much quicker oh, than is a she? gecko. Oh, is she? Oh, she's just very calm right now. Okay. So she's. It's actually getting to be her bedtime. Ah, uh, yeah. I understand. Now this next one. This is this is our our most famous animal that we have. You ask. A lot of kids around town, what's the big yellow snake's name? Oh. They'll tell you it's marshmallow. So this marshmallow. Is marshmallow. Okay. Marshmallow is oh. a really friendly Burmese python. Friendly. Oh. Burmese pythons. Burmese. Oh, it's Holy snakes. Oh. Yeah. Cow. So I'm gonna put him up here just to show you wow. how big he is. Uh, hi. And he. Hi. <laughs> Are you nervous, Gary? I'm a bit. Now, this guy is a Burmese python, oh. but it's, it's a different type of Burmese python. It's actually an albino Burmese python. Okay. And so that's why the yellow. albino yeah, will make it nice and yellow like this. Generally, if you see him in the wild, it would have light browns and browns and black. So this weird. guy is really pretty yellow. And he's really, really yellow today because two days ago, he shed his skin. Oh, really? Oh. So he just shed. So they call this fresh paint on a snake. Oh. Makes him look really great. <laughs> nice really and sharp. Bright. Really yeah. Nice and sharp. He, he knew he was coming on TV, so he had to get ready. He got all pretty. <laughs> got a new outfit. One of my favorite things to do with this snake, especially with the kids and even with adults, is put it around the shoulders. Yeah. So do you guys want to? I'm yeah. All right. So you guys can stay sitting there. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put the butt end around this guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> I'm gonna put this guy over here. I like this. Okay. Holy there we go. He's heavy. He is right? a little heavy. Yeah. He weighs almost 50 pounds. Oh my lord. Okay. Uh, I'll put this end around. Oh. Your and okay. this guy will bring you close together, closer than you have oh. already. Oh. Great folks with all those reptiles and things. Um, once again, if you wanted to book Troy for any of your services, you can look him up on Facebook as Jelly Bean Entertainment. Okay, I'd like to thank all our guests that were on tonight. Of course, Jelly Bean Entertainment, Troy Stuckless, and all his reptile friends. Once again, Bill and Carolyn from the Coast 1011 Morning Show. You can listen to them every morning on the radio. And, of course, magician Michael Conway. Thanks again for coming in, Michael. And all the rest of you. Okay, folks, we'll see you next time on NLN.